Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you to um, both of you for being here. I also want to thank uh, my colleagues that have spoke um, before me today um, for using your indoor voice and um, for exercising a decorum. We are on the third floor of the U.S. Capitol, and I think it's important for us um, to be respectful with each other. Um, today, we regrettably face one of the most solemn duties the Constitution vests in Congress. I, like all of you here, did not come to Congress to impeach a president. As a matter of fact, on January 20th of 2017, I stood in the freezing rain to watch Donald Trump be sworn in as the 45th president of the United States. I was there in good faith. I was there because I believe in the peaceful transfer of power. I was there because I believe in the rule of law. And maybe foolishly, I also believe in second chances, that we would have elected someone who can stand up and represent all Americans. But then in September, approximately three months ago, we learned that President Trump had with critical military funding to Ukraine, a strategic partner in a war with Russia. And then October 3rd, President Trump announced that China and Ukraine should investigate his political rivals on national TV. The president's personal attorney also said that Biden should be investigated. Now, President Trump famously said that he could shoot someone dead in the middle of Fifth Avenue in New York City, and he would get away with it. What mindset do you have to be in to say that out loud on national TV and to believe that? Well, anyone who turns a blind eye to behavior like this is providing him that right. Five GOP primaries have been canceled. Kansas, Alaska, South Carolina, Arizona, Nevada. GOP, the Republicans across the nation are locked in step to defend at any cost the bad actions and illegal actions of this president. The facts are clear. To quote the USA Today editorial board, Trump used your tax dollars to shake down a vulnerable foreign government to interfere in a US election for his personal benefit. Ambassador Gordon Sondland, President Trump's handpicked ambassador to the European Union, testified to President Trump abuse of power it was in a form of a simple question was there a quid pro quo as I testified previously with regard to the request to the to the requested White House call and White House meeting the answer is yes we also have the rough transcript of Trump's July 25th call released by the president himself. For all the claims that President Trump was withholding military aid over corruption in Ukraine, he never once utters the word corruption in the call. He does ask for a favor, though, a favor that has nothing to do with U.S. national interest and everything to do 
with his own political interests. Trump's actions were clear abuse of presidential power. He conditioned official acts of office on a political advantage in the next election. Think about that. All of us here, members of Congress, have taken ethics training on the House rules and on federal crimes. I just did the training last week. We've all sworn the same oath of office to protect and defend our Constitution. And imagine, imagine if a city in our districts asked for our help with a grant or an appropriations request. Would any of us reply, I would like you to do us a favor, though, and announce an investigation into my political opponent? Of course not. And why would you not do that? Because no one, no one is above the law, not even the president. And you know that asking for that type of favor is illegal. The rule of law is what gives our great country its strength. The rule of law is what separates us from third world countries where dictators reign for decades on. The rule of law is what makes us, our great country, the envy of the world the place that other countries look for inspiration as they grow their own democracies. And it is the rule of law that brings all of us here today. And as the only member of Congress from Central America, take it from me, that we never want to see a day when the rule of law simply fades away. <laughs> I never want to see a day where American families have to send their children to live outside of the country because of public corruption. Look at Honduras. Their constitution banned presidential reelections. Their constitution clearly states that if presidents try to get rid of the reelection ban, that they should be removed from office immediately. And despite all of this, President Juan Orlando Hernandez ran again anyway. And the Supreme Court in Honduras, filled with his supporters, got rid of term limits. And he is now serving his second term in violation of his country's founding principles. Honduras is now a narco state. And we have thousands of Honduran families at our southern border seeking asylum. In Guatemala, the people have been waging an uphill battle against corruption for years. Former President Otto Perez Molina took bribes in exchange for lower taxes. Millions of tax dollars lined the pockets of high-ranking officials instead of meeting the needs of the people in one of the poorest countries in Latin America. Today, President Trump said, after a meeting with President Morales, in Guatemala, they handle things much tougher than the US. Imagine that. CSIG, the anti-corruption organization formed to bring justice to Guatemala, brought hundreds of cases of corruption to light. But once again, they began, once they began investigating President Jimmy Morales, for illegal campaign financing, he promptly shot down the commission. Does this sound familiar to anyone? President Morales even forced the former Attorney General, Thelma Aldana, who worked to fight corruption to seek asylum in the United States because her safety is now at risk. Does this sound familiar to anyone? 
I bring these examples up to remind my colleagues that the future health of our democracy is not assured. We can slide back to tyranny, one corrupt act at a time. And until our democracy is like the fake village in North Korea that faces the DMZ, a nice looking facade that masks the tyranny within, that's why the articles of impeachment are so important. Mr. Chairman, the Constitution did not come from a higher power. It is just a document, a piece of paper with words written on it. But, but we, the people, give the Constitution its power. We, the people, decide to follow and honor our laws. And today, we, the people, must agree that the laws apply to everyone, including the President of the United States. That, that is the President that we expect of all elected officials. And it is the President that we must reaffirm in these proceedings. 60 years ago, Martin Luther King issued a warning during the civil rights era which resonates very much with the choice before us today. And Dr. King said, if you fail to act now, history will have to record that the greatest tra tragedy of this period of social transition was not the strident clamor of the bad people, but the appalling silence of the good people. Let's move forward. I, I want to ask you, do you know how many witnesses were blocked from testifying? 